April 9th, 2024, meeting of the Hadley Housing Authority. Um, I'm David Moskin. I am the retiring chair. I'm about to walk out of the room, but I want to thank everybody for helping me out as long as I was here. Well, you and gotta stay for the vote. What's that? Stay for the vote. What vote? Appointment of new chairperson. Oh, is that make it out to Yeah, you have to vote. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the I had sent in your request, Sue, and your requests about ten days ago, but I don't see them on the uh, No, they're not on the agenda. Yeah, they're not on the agenda, so I don't know what happened. I know I did write to you. Pam, you were on vacation. Right? I was on Pamela wrote to you though. Oh, okay. I don't know why they didn't make it to the agenda. But you have uh, three people here, that's a quorum, right? So uh, Well, we would like for you to <coughs> Um, I mean, can you stay through the vote for a new chairperson? If you'd like to do the vote for a new chairperson right now, that would be fine. Yeah, okay. Um, you want to make a motion? So maybe, yeah. I think we already have made the motion that uh, Reese is going to take over as chair. Do you have a second? I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? If not, uh, um, we'll take a vote for Reese to be the next chair. And that aye. Aye, 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 aye. Any against? Any abstentions? No. Okay. And you can bring that back to a vote again when there's new members of the uh, board, as you would feel was appropriate. I'm sure you would feel that's appropriate. So, guys, thank you very much. I may be back. I, you know, I was the governor's appointee. I have not spoken to Maury Healy yet about um, reappointing me. That might happen. Um, so, uh, I may see you all again. Thank you. I'll see you all around. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, moving right along. Uh, topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. We did receive a um, a letter from Secretary of Augustus for the from the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities. We'll be adding that to board correspondence. And uh, there are no other topics that uh, David has told me about. So we've already appointed a new chairperson. And now we're on approval of the minutes. I would like to check something, please. Um, for the reasonably. Reasonably topics, reasonably anticipated. Right. Uh-huh. Well, as, da as David Moskin said a few minutes ago, I submitted agenda items and not one agenda item got it ended up on the agenda and some of these agenda items two of them were on the february agenda and never got responded to so now we have february not responded to march no meeting and now we have uh, april and they're not okay so, right um, so that's and another thing i wanted to i would like to remind all commissioners that when you speak you address the chair i did so you can address the chair. She started. Okay. Uh, we are now at the approval of minutes. There were no other topics that, uh, that was notified to David or who was chair or to me as the new chair. So we are now at approval of the minutes and I will remind all commissioners that we have to stick to the agenda items as they are written because of open meeting law. So we will not we will not entertain any other topics other than those listed on the agenda, including during public comment. If it's not on the agenda, we will not entertain it in public comment. So approval of the minutes. I'll make a motion we approve the minutes. I'll second. Discussion? Discussion? How, how do you want to be referred to? Miss or Miss or Ma'am or what? Miss Chairman? Just, what, just by your name? How I do you can want just to? say Chair if you want. Chair, okay. Uh, but, but, but I would also like to say we have to be out of here by 12 noon. So we are going to clip right along. Uh, and just a reminder to everyone that when we approve minutes, our minutes are a transcript of the exact words that were said. So we don't entertain any discussion about 
uh, things you don't think are accurate in the minutes, unless it's a typo, etc. cetera. Uh, if you don't agree with what somebody said, you cannot entertain that. So how I'll do this is I will ask each commissioner for their comment by name. Sue, would you like to go first? Yes, but what I would like to know um, is about where it says that you can't bring up the fact that it's more than just a typo because how I feel about reading through these minutes is that there's a lot of disjointed sentences, mistakes, and judgments. So when you, when you bring a judgment into it when it's being typed up, it's not something that's happening, it's somebody's personal judgment is appearing on these minutes. Yes, ma'am, Commissioner. Okay. Yes, please. So, but the transcript, is, it's written verbatim. So whatever was said, so if somebody made a judgment call in the meeting, it's in here. If somebody misspoke something, it's in here. If it's somebody made an incomplete comment, right? It's it. That's how. That's how it. It's. It's written. It's a full transcript, verbatim. But I know when I speak a sentence that I don't. My sentences don't end in the middle of a sentence. I finish my sentence, and ninety percent of the things that are in here don't have a complete sentence with me speaking. And if I watch the tape, I do. So it isn't exactly what. So if you could write, write, watch the tape, and then complete the sentence, we'll. We'll look at the tape as well and see if that's correct. It would be helpful if you would put the time stamp. Just, yeah. just it would just be very helpful if, there's an an if you have a time stamp. But what? Um, so anyway, so I'll be next. Or are you through with your comment? Yes, I am. Okay, so I'll be next. I did find one that on the approval of the minutes, right before the executive director report, it says vote three to one. Uh, could we please have listed, uh, I mean, it's pretty easy to determine because we only had uh, four board members present on Tuesday, February 27th. So uh, we just need to know who voted no. Uh -huh. I can put that and in. that's the only thing I saw. Rich? The Jeff, uh, I agree with you there. And uh, I have still approved the minutes. Okay. And so let's go for another round in case Sue has something else to say. Nothing more. Nothing more? I have nothing more. Rich, do nope, you have anything? Nothing. At all. Okay, I'll call for a vote. Make a, a motion to approve the minutes of uh, February 27th, 24. Uh, including the, the one change. Is that good enough? And, and also myself going over it and rewriting the areas where, it, where it's incomplete sentences, where it's half sentences. Um, if you have at a subsequent date the requisite information so that the secretary can make changes, then we can, uh, we can uh, make a motion to add those substantive changes, okay? Sure. Okay, so call for the vote. I vote yes. Yes. Two minutes. On February 27th, 2024. So we have three to zero. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the executive director report. So we have the warrant report first. And that's the warrant report for, we can let Richie do that. That'll be between uh, Transaction we did two eight twenty four two eight twenty four. We've looked them over and we approved the warrant. I'll make a motion we approve it. I'll second. Is Any discussion? discussion? Yeah, I would just add um, if we could amend that to include that from two twenty two to two twenty two it was seventeen thousand eight hundred and seventy five dollars and sixty four cents. Okay, we're not on that one yet, ma'am. Did you say 22 or no? No, no, okay. you said 28, 20, 24. Okay, so that's so 20, that's the money. 20, okay. 79, 79. 23,079 dollars and 79 cents. Uh, so now we're open for discussion. Sue. Yes, on the first page of 28, 2024, I'm wondering where it says number four, number six, number five, boiler cleaning. Is that for the whole building, $200? Uh, 
Well, I can tell you that. How many apartments, in other words? Okay, so are you talking about this first section? Yes. Now? Okay, so you see there's a boiler in every apartment? Yes. Okay. No. Every other no. building. No. Every 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 other building. Every, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah they right. share a boiler. So it's okay. in, the entire complex was done, and that's the address associated with the boilers. So that's when it gives a number of a building there, it's the whole building. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So building one, two, three, four, five, six, and E. Okay. Any more? That's it. Okay, I have no uh, discussion about this. Rick? No, I, I made the motion. No. Uh, I'll go around one more time, Sue. No. Have you thought of anything else? Okay. So let's vote on two, eight, 2024 to 228 uh, 228 2024. Yep, we made this the one we're voting on. Yep, now yeah, I made the motion. Of, oh, I know, and so now we're, yeah. Sue? Um, I'm looking okay, so you're still looking at discussion? I'm just making sure I made little notes. I'm just making sure I don't have any notes on this page. Yeah, we're still on 28 or we have Yeah, we're on 28. We haven't voted for 28 yet. I don't think she's looking at the next one. Oh, Are you voting. looking at 2A? When You're still on 2A, okay. Yeah, well, we have to vote. No, nothing more on that one. Okay, so let's um, call for a vote. Richie and I voted yes to approve the one yes. report of 2A. Okay, so it's 3 zero. Okay, next is the uh, transaction, the 222-24 and 222-24. We looked them over and Pam, you Oh, you just want to add that dollar amount. Uh, approval of seventeen thousand eight eight seventy five sixty four. All right. So, uh, do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. We accept. I'll second. Discussion. Sue. Yes, I, I was wondering when um, when Gary to pay charges a fee. Mm -hmm. Is that just for a one time fee or for? for it's a month <coughs> for that particular month. It is, yes. Okay. That's the only question I have. All right, I have no discussion. Rich? Make a motion we accept. Do you have any further discussion, sir? No further questions. Please make your motion. Make a motion we accept. Okay, I'll second. I'll Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Three to zero. Now we're moving on to, to uh, Treasurer's Report. Mr. Whitkiss. Mr. Whitkiss is our Treasurer for the Board. Uh, Treasurer's Report of February 29, 2024. Have we it over? Yes. Yeah. Okay, as long as you're on. Oh, here it is. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, we need a motion, so I'll move uh, to accept the treasurer's report of February 29th, 2024. Do I have a second? A second. Discussion, Sue? Nothing. I have nothing? No, nothing. Call for vote? Yes. Nice. Three to zero. Now we are at the write-off report. Um, Pamela, could you give us that? Yep, so this is um, some housekeeping. These are tenants that have, um, are no longer with the housing authority. Um, that have a balance due. So they, these need to be written off of our books, but then they, if they're able to be collected, they'll be collected. So they go into collections, and if not, um, it's it's a loss. And this is standard procedure. I remember we've had to do this before. Yes. Yep. All right. Uh, this is a votable report. Uh, call for a motion. I'll make the motion. Uh, second. Discussion. Sue? No discussion. No discussion from me. Nothing. Uh, another round? No? Nothing? Okay. I'll call for vote. Yes. Three to zero. 
property management reports, unit vacancy report, Pamela. So currently we have um, five vacancies at Golden Court and two at Berkway. Um, as I reported at the last meeting, we were still being held up on the vacancies due to the, um, the funding from HLC for the capital improvements, which you'll see in the letter um, from Se uh, Secretary Augustus that that money is coming in now. Yeah. I have asked, um, so we do participate with RCAD, the Regional Capital Assistance Team, on any projects that are over $50,000. They help have oversight of it. Um, there'll be architects involved and things of that nature. I asked them to expedite um, the two units that were making more ADA friendly. Um, we have the funding for it, and we have people waiting for those units. So they are expediting two of those units. Uh, both Burke Way vacancies are very large capital projects that are also in the works, um, but I do suspect those will, those will take months to get finished. Tristan, they did that before. Too, the, when we worked on those up, that other one big project over in Berkeley right. that had to be basically gutted and yeah, redone, and it takes a very long time. It does between the the, the architects and the paperwork and the funding, um, and then contractor schedules. It takes yeah, a long time. It takes a long time. Okay, so there's no vote needed on that. And then and tenant uh, tenant accounts receivable, Pamela. Yep. So this is. Um, Tenants account receivable that is um, amount rents due from tenants. Um, we're still trying to make some progress here at Golden Court in Berkeley. Um, you can see on the bottom half of it, there these are repayment agreements, and that's what we want to do. We want to put people into repayment agreements um, to show that um, there's an agreement that we're we're collecting the money, um, and that does not have an adverse effect on either the tenant or the housing authority when we do that, um, but the upper part is we're still working to get to get coverage um, or to get the receive those monies. Can I make a okay? So this is also not a votable thing, but I'd like a little bit of discussion. Sue, do you have anything to say? Nothing to say. Okay, I do have some comments to make, mm -hmm. and uh, this will be also when we discuss later our uh, performance management review you'll see why i'm making these comments uh, for payment agreements we have a total in payment agreements of twelve thousand six hundred and twenty three dollars and forty one cents no eleven thousand nine hundred fifty seven oh now oh that's right sorry somebody yeah. made a payment so now four people made payments, so now we're eleven thousand nine fifty seven forty one. Yep. We also have a fraud repayment. Yes. And uh, I just want to uh, tie into what we've discussed before as a board. One of our it, one of our biggest responsibilities is to make sure that we're financially solvent. That's the role, the main role of the board is finances and legal. And uh, I, I am aghast that people haven't been paying our rent. Pamela, you've explained before that Hadley Housing Authority kind of got into a bad uh, habit of over the years of people not you've said that before and yes yeah and, and i will note too that this that this upper part which is what we're still trying to collect uh -huh. um each one of what you just wrote out off was ten thousand eight hundred thirty three dollars and fifty two cents uh -huh. that's in this eighteen thousand five hundred and twenty nine dollars okay so we have written off so that's going to bring that number down to significantly eight thousand yes yeah, but but to, so then what happens again with the write-offs is if um, if somebody has passed away, yes, um, of course. we write it off. We don't go after family or, or yeah. survivors or anything like that. Um, but if somebody has moved away, um, we abs we we make attempts to collect through um, you know letters go out. There's requests mm -hmm. for payment. They're advised that it's going to go on a credit report mm -hmm. and that it, uh, and it's going to be turned over to collections mm -hmm. and that it's also going to be turned over to collections to the Department of Revenue. And the Department of Revenue will um, seize any money 
Yeah. Um, from lottery winnings, tax returns, things of that nature. Um, and they will pay back the housing authority for the monies that are owed for rent. But the section of tenants that I would like clarified, not uh, um, is we have tenants who owe money but refuse to pay? Yes. Yes. All right. Which is not very consistent because everyone's rent right. is based on 30% of their income. Right. Whether they're paying a $900 rent or they're paying a $25 rent. And it's this, based on 30, so it's fair and consistent. Right, so right. So everyone has to pay their rent because otherwise it's not fair and consistent. It's not fair and consistent. Right. And so this is one of the biggest reasons we have legal fees. Yes. Is to collect yes. rent that tenants have have refused or failed to pay. Yes. And they've not gone into a uh, repayment agreement. Correct. If they go into a repayment agreement. They can avoid housing court. Absolutely. And okay. we get late fees and all kinds of things. Absolutely. Okay. In this situation, what are our other charges? The other charges would be this, um, oh. the late fees or um, damages, if there were damages okay. to a unit. Okay. Um, legal costs. Legal. All right. Oh, the sheriff's processing fee and stuff? Yeah. yeah. And the legal fee, too. Yeah. Okay, so this I think is very helpful for our board to understand what's really our responsibility and what our executive director and our staff have to deal with. So, okay, so anything more on the tenant account receivable report, Pamela? No, ma'am. Any other questions? Yeah. Rich? Yeah. I make a motion to accept. Uh, we don't have to vote on yeah, this one. We do, don't we? Nope. Oh, no, you're right. right. Okay, so now we're to facilities in the agenda and Pamela uh, reporting on capital and the certificate of final completion. Yes, we have finally completed the window project. <laughs> um, fully completed and we're doing the closeout documentation. And as a reminder, we um, this was a very large project as everyone knows. And then the, um, the architects, the contractor, DHCD, the town came out, everybody came out and viewed the product to make sure it was in compliance and everything looked good. Everyone has signed off, and so now we, we need to pay um, the contractor the remaining amount, which is $11,446.99. Okay, so we need a motion? Yes. Yeah, and it does have to be a certificate of final completion. for this. Sue, we need a motion? Yes. Uh, but you have to say. Right. <laughs> Pardon me? You have to say I move that. I move that. We vote. Uh, that we approve the certificate of final completion for project 117082. Can you just read it? Do you see it right there? Oh, it's on your agenda. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm just sat on my bike. Uh oh. <laughs> I share your pain. <laughs> I have a motion to give eleven thousand four hundred forty-six dollars and ninety-nine cents. That's due for the window project. Let me show you what you need. Uh, I uh, is that you have a motion to approve this certificate, certificate of final completion. Okay. So, so just read that off. And then I have a motion. For the certificate of final completion, project 117082. For the Golden Court. For the Golden Court window completion. In the amount of? In the amount of $11,446.99. I'll do a second. Uh, any discussion? No discussion. No. I have no discussion. Call for the vote. Nice. We have three to zero. <laughs> the next. Item is the administrative fee for project 117082. So this is this is the first time we're being asked to do this. Um, there was quite a lot of discussion at the conference with um, that we just attended with HLC. Um, this is an administrative fee that um, DHC, HLC has always allowed 10% above uh, a contract price to go to the housing authority. 
Um, they're implementing new guidelines where we have to fill out a form and that we have to get a board vote to approve this dollar amount. So this, um, this and the, that helps pay for additional staff time or any additional um, expenses that the housing authority incurs. So in this project, the 10% is $19,285. And I should note that's on the original amount. So there were there were some change orders along the way. I don't even know if you recall. Yeah, we, yeah. They forgot to put in the grills on the windows, and I wanted those, so there was a change order. We don't get 10% on that, but this was on the original contract. Um, additionally, this, this amount we're asking to be repaid back to the Amherst Housing Authority. And what we had done is we applied for the CPA grant, which the Housing Authority got, attended a public meeting for the CPA grant. There was oversight of the project of the Housing Authority staff. Um, there was full-time office and community room co coverage during the construction. There was full-time coverage and overtime of maintenance during the construction. Um, there was communication with tenants and preps with the, um, leading up to the construction. Um, we it, prepping uh, the units and the grounds for construction, and there was one unfortunate housing course case for a temporary restraining order to help everybody get all on the same page. Mm -hmm. um, so, with the housing authority, do I, we have some tenants in the room? I, I'm sure you remember we did um, throughout the construction. There was staff here to help when there was a construction day. There was food for because you had to leave your apartment, unfortunately. So there was food here all day. Though these things are going to help re um, reimburse the housing authority. Yeah. So we just need a board vote for this as well. Okay. okay, so thank you for the explanation. Uh, I need a motion. So I need a motion to approve the uh, administrative fee for project 117082. I'll make the motion to accept. I'll second. Now, discussion. Sue? If you said the money is being paid back to Amherst Housing Authority, mm -hmm. since the project was done in the Hadley Housing Authority, Hadley gets none of the money that's left over from the project? That's correct. And and how is that? I mean, who decides that? Is that an accountant decision? Or? That's Well, that's you folks actually decide, uh, decide that. That's right. why you're voting on it. But it is because we, we did the work. We're the employees of the Housing right. Authority. Mm -hmm. So Amherst is being compensated for their employees being here extra. Um, the management agreement does not cover a director of finances, of uh, facilities, right. um, CPA grants, things right. of that nature. Right. Didn't cover the right. And my second question is, we talked about after the project that the one window that didn't get done in our apartments was the kitchen window. Yeah. And you said that you wished that we had done it. Right. Could this 19000 be used, any of it, to do that particular window that didn't get done in our apartment? Every other window got done except for the kitchen. Right. And, and any vial of money could be used for that. But yes, you could use this as well. But so, not if it's being paid to Amherst. Yes. So the goal is to put that on a CPA, another CPA yeah. project, is to replace the front door with a, a side window to get a bigger a bigger unit there for the doors. So that's a, the, an upcoming project. And you're and we can put in each year for CPA money. Absolutely. Yeah, they encourage oh, us yeah. to do so. In fact, uh, as you know, I'm on the community preservation and I, and we are as community preservation board or committee mem uh, members uh, told to actively pursue applications. So I've already talked to Pamela about submitting an application for the door project. That will put the door project maybe a little sooner than it was. Yes, because we did have the door project years ago when another well, executive director was here, but it just never came into fruition. There just wasn't any right. money, is I think. But now that we've got this good relationship with community preservation, and we're doing a lot of good work on community preservation, I think you'll see that door project coming sooner than the three years that it, three years from now that it was on the capital improvement plan that we had from last spring. And my only other question is if this nineteen thousand dollars is going to Amherst, is there an accounting of how this money will be used or where it is going to? Will it be divided into categories so people will know where the money went? So we we really we earmark this towards a new um, van for the maintenance staff. So all of the all of the maintenance trucks 
right. for all three authorities are not in great shape. So we were using this as a um, money towards a new van. I think what Hale is saying, if I'm understanding correct, or, or wait a minute, I'm sorry, are you done now? Yes, I'm done. Okay. So I think my understanding is basically Amherst Housing Authority are managing agent, but managing agent contracts do not include, uh, say, um, uh, project manager type work, which this is. This is like a project manager type work. It doesn't include a huge capital project. You have to be reimbursed for the monies you spent to make this project go. The staff it's, time, the everything. Yeah, it's a, it is an incentive to housing authorities to do the capital project. Right, and without, uh, yes, and so without um, a, a housing authority helping a smaller housing authority and a bigger housing authority uh, helping a smaller housing authority, they too don't have enough money just to to make things nice for a smaller housing authority. But a smaller housing authority has to reimburse the larger housing authority who's helping us on a project. Well, there is yeah through this through this through mechanism. The, through this mechanism. Yeah. Does that make sense, Sue? <clears throat> to a point. It does. Do you have another comment? No. Okay. No, Rich, do you have a comment? Yeah, no comment. No. Okay, I want to go around one more time. Sue, anything? No more. Okay. Um, I have no more comments. Rich? No. I'll no. call for a vote. I'll make the motion that we accept. Uh, All right. well, I think we already did that, but okay. No, you already made yeah, the motion? Yeah, I think we already made the motion. Right. Now we're just voting. Vote. All right, vote. No. Nay. <laughs> Uh, that should have come up in uh, comments again. Well, that's what I, I did. I, I said in comments that I, I want to think about it. I need more time to. Well, you, we, it, it passes. So it does have to be voted with to close out the project. So it has but, to be it, but it did pass, so it's fine. Good majority. All right, um, now we are to the work order report. And there's nothing unusual here. Yeah, I, I, I looked at it, so we don't need a vote on that. No, nope. uh, But Just any discussion? Sue? Um, are we still, my discussion would be, are we still on Thursdays as a housing authority here in Hadley? Is that still our day? Because for, for, we're having maintenance. For regular maintenance. For regular maintenance. No, for, for tenant generated maintenance. Tenant generated maintenance. Tenant generated right. request. Because yeah. I've been seeing uh, maintenance people here on different days other than Thursday. Thursday or all the time. They come for emergency work orders. They work on vacancies. But I haven't seen them much on Thursdays. That's why I was wondering if, if the there's day had not changed. As, no, there's just not as many work orders coming in from the tenants. Yeah. Um, so, and I want to, uh, are, are you finished? I'm all finished. Oh. So I, I just wanted to say I love this new format that tells us when the work order was called in and when it was completed. I think that's brilliant. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, and I, I saw nothing unusual on this uh, uh, the work order for, oh, looks like for February. So, and we don't need a vote on that again. So now we're to commissioner's discussion. Uh, we can eliminate Chairman's farewell comments because David Moskin already gave us his comments and we will miss him. Uh, so the next discussion is the Mass Narrow Conference. Three of us sitting here at the table went to at least part or all of it. Um, if you'd like to make some comments about your experience there, what did you learn, Sue, that sort of thing? What did I learn? Yeah. And to share it with the public. So, <laughs> well, my favorite part was uh, probably listening to the attorneys and hearing what they had to say. Yeah. I thought they were quite entertaining, Driscoll and Driscoll. <laughs> yeah. Great personalities, and they were. I thought uh, I just enjoyed it in general. 
Yeah, yeah. I think where they held it was wonderful. Everything was neatly, and you know the rooms were all together. You can thank so Pamela for that. Yeah. <laughs> the food was good, <laughs> and uh, I'd go again if I was invited. Wonderful. Uh, so I went. Uh, I was there for the entire conference. I was able to go the whole three days. I too learned a lot, and yes, my favorite uh, ones are the quote ask the attorney sessions or sessions where attorneys uh, deliver the content uh, and mostly that's because for board of commissioners the legal and financial is our number one well it's our only responsibility is our is, is uh, to uh, the legal and the financial health of the housing authority but I think we also got a clear answer this time when a question was asked about do uh, do board of commissioners can board of commissioners uh, say someone on the board of commissioner help an individual tenant or group of tenants with an issue and the answer is clearly no that is not at all within our um, fiduciary responsibility and can cause problems that went to great length about explaining why that could be a problem so uh, all, most all tenant issues go to, what I learned was most all tenant issues, in fact, I think 100% of tenant issues go to the staff and eventually the executive director is responsible for that. And um, so any complaints, any concerns tenants have, whatever, it all has to go to staff it. There's nothing that can be brought to the uh, board regarding tenant issues is that yeah and, yeah. Then, and then there's if you don't agree with the decision of the executive director there's the grievance policy procedures oh. for afterwards so there's always there's yeah. always a, a path yeah. to resolution that you can and the, the only time anything like that comes to the board of commissioners is if it's gone pretty much all the way through the process and if it's still not resolved, then it can come to the Board of Commissioners before it goes to Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities. But we, we've spun our wheels here on this board quite a bit, hearing things from tenants that should have been called into staff. And that's not what a Board of Commissioners is for. And they clearly stated that. Um, can I just speak on the call? Oh, please, because, yeah. So um, for the for the tenants here, and, um, it, so the conference, uh, the housing authority, and the me as your executive director and your board, your chair people are all members of Massachusetts NARO. NARO is the National Association of Redevelopment and Housing Professionals, something, something like that. Those are, and this is the Massachusetts chapter. All 243 housing authorities in the Commonwealth are members of uh, Mass NARO. And what happens is twice a year, there is conferences where we go away, um, and it sounds luxurious, but it's exhausting. <laughs> it's, act, it's actually really exhausting. I can tell. Um, and there's sessions. They, um, they're usually an hour and a half long, sometimes a little bit longer. And they're on topics of um, new what's new coming up with the legislation. Um, as Sue and, and um, Reese were both saying, too, there's um, there's lots of ask the attorney mock board meetings, um, meetings to train people. Um, and you just get so much from talking to other people about what they're doing in their housing authority. You can get a really great new idea. Um, or you can find out, unfortunately, that we've done something wrong and then you have to come back and correct it. Um, and it, there's, there's just so there's a lot of networking and, um, and learning that happens. Um, on the tenant side too, there are organizations like um, Mass Union. I'm not. I don't think Mel Keen does a conference, correct? Do you? I don't know. I, don't I think know, they, they mostly go to Mass Union sometimes. I think they mostly go to the actual housing yeah. authorities and to themselves, the right? Yeah. yeah. So and then there's uh, there's trainings that we take too. Uh, we, we're all certified. We have our um, Massachusetts Public Housing Administrator certificates, which come for, through Mass Naro. There there's a seven 
courses that we have to take in order to be certified. Our board members that take, I believe, Risa, you are fully I'm certified. certified. She's fully certifiable. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, she's fully certified. Not certifiable. No, certified. In there too. Um, <laughs> but then on the tenant side too, there is, if there's organizations like Mass Tenants Unions that, that also has these type of conferences where you go away for a night um, or, or, you know, overnight, but you have an entire day of from 8.30 in the morning till 5 o'clock at night with sessions. And then even um, this spring session that we just went to is a little bit shorter. It's only Sunday to Tuesday morning. Um, but even the dinners have speakers and, you know, you're sitting around learning stuff and absorbing. So We're literally really working the entire time. The entire time. time. Pam, do they ever pick the brains of tenants, though, for uh, things that they would like to see Mass Narrow deal with at, at these conventions as far as workshops go? Because some of the workshops that they gave were, you know, were things that I haven't seen before, but some were, you know, pretty mainstream. Yeah. So because of that reason, do, they, do you ever ask tenants what they would like their executive directors and people that are attending these conferences have as, as topics? So to there's, present? So that's actually a great idea. Um, there is a, so there's a professional development committee that puts together whether it's the trainings throughout the year or it's the conferences. And it usually, the sessions come from the committee, so anybody that's on the committee. Um, you're very fortunate that I am the chairperson of that committee, so if you tell me, I can bring it back to the committee and add things. Um, we did try to add some more um, information for tenants. We don't typically get a lot of tenants that attend, uh, but they're welcome to in the spring. They typically come in the fall now. We, we go to Seacrest down at the Cape um, in the fall. We get a little bit more tenants there and Mass Union at that one too. Um, but there were sessions on how, you know, best practices for working with your LTO, um, but there could be other sessions. Yeah, so I'm talking about more like topics more than the people actually being part of the conference but giving uh, like a suggestion box or coming yes. to you with ideas. Yes, yep, we, would, we absolutely would take those. Absolutely. We did have sessions about LTOs, working yeah. with LTOs, which is the tenant organization. Yeah. We had a session about that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So. Okay, any other comments, Sue? Yes, uh, under commissioner's discussion, because of the fact that we're still on the Mass Narrow Conference. Oh, you're still on that? Okay. I, I thought you were fit to finish. Well, I, I'm asking, are you, do you have any other? Nothing more for the, for the okay. Mass Narrow. So now on uh, open board seats. So we're to have a discussion about the open board seats. That was something I think you asked for, or did you ask for that? I, yes. Oh, okay. well, in fact, I asked a couple months ago about that, yeah. But it's on now. It's on now, yeah. Um, did you have comments to make? Just wanted to know what our procedure was going to be because after Richie leaves, it's just going to be two people on the board. Yeah. The chairman and myself. And <laughs> one more month. Okay. So regarding <laughs> open board seats, um, as you know, and Richie sure knows, and of course Pamela knows, so with open board seats, they're staggered. So. Right now, because of resignations and end of term, Richie's uh, been sitting on this board for five years. His term ends on May 21st at the town meeting, where we will, the town will vote for a new uh, board member for the housing to take the seat that Richie occupies now. There's also another uh, vacancy, and that's for a, the end of a five-year term. Um, that uh, uh, Harry Chadwick held and when he resigned in December so that's only a, a one-year term but it essentially be until town meeting of 2025 spring town meeting of 2025 so uh, uh, yeah you only yeah so it'll be for a one-year term again so uh, to my knowledge, have you heard anything, Pamela? It's my understanding that no one pulled out nomination papers. So no one is running for those two seats. Um, and then it just remains to be seen what happens. But it's not something the Board of Commissioners can fix under law for housing commissioners, boards. Uh, the town 
has to then appoint commissioners. And so we will just wait and see who the town can. Yeah. So the, te the the last time too, the town did work with the board of commissioners to yeah. um, to to have somebody appointed. So that's yeah. typically what would happen if you. So if you know anybody, <laughs> yeah. we would work with the town, the uh, the select board and the board of commissioners to come with somebody, and then they would there be an interview process, and then they would right. be appointed. Right. Would, yes, this, would, would they be appointed just till May, till the election? No. No. This will be a. They would stay, but it would be for what, as Reese was saying, that it would be for one of those terms, either a one-year term, or a five-year, yeah, or a five-year term, depending yeah. on what, what's coming seat. up. And we also have another seat vacant, and that's the seat that David uh, has occupied for a little over a year, and that is as the governor appointee. So uh, Charlie Baker. Governor Charlie Baker appointed David for the end of someone else's term who left, and but only for a little over a year appointment until, well, I think what David told me was about mid-April. Um, and David has not decided whether or not to re-up and ask Governor Healy to reappoint him for, say, another time period, whatever that is. Typically five years. Yeah. Is the governor appointee three years or five years? Five years. Five years. Five years. Okay. Five years. So uh, he's still trying to make that decision, but it sounds like he's resigned for now. But he might ask Governor Healy to to uh, reappoint him. Uh, any more comments, Sue? No more comments. Rich? Um, I do have one other comment, and that is we adopted, I mean, in COVID, the meetings were uh, on, you know, a video format. And then about a year and a half ago, we went to a hybrid format for a couple of meetings, and then we went to an in-person format. The in-person format uh, keeps a lot of people from, from, um, become uh, being willing to become a commissioner because they can't take time away from their work or their whatever but they can always at work get an hour or so available to attend this board meeting online so I think we might want to look at at uh, going back to video format or hybrid format or I think we need to look at that because I think that there are people I've talked to who said, I just can't come into a meeting. Uh, they also said, not these three hour meetings we've had, which is another reason why I'd like to get our meetings down to an hour or less. Um, so I just want you all to think about that as commissioners and see what we can come up with doing something different, because it does keep people from being able to volunteer as a commissioner. Uh, so now we're down to board correspondence. This is the exciting stuff. Our first is the um, the performance management review from 2023. Uh, were you able to read this, Sue? Yes, I was. All right, Rich. So I'll I'll ask Sue if she has any comments. Yes. Yeah, so as far as on page two occupancy rate where it says no finding no finding no finding how can there be no finding if there was an audit well I'll explain this to you this is for uh, uh, fiscal year 2023 right so what we have going on in 2023 as far as an occupancy rate is that uh, given the, the rules of the performance management review we are doing great. And I know that you see empty apartments, but always there's been a reason that has been approved by the state, waivers, et cetera. Yeah. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. No findings means we're in compliance. You're, we're in compliance. Uh, uh, Pamela and her staff have done a very good job keeping, keeping us in compliance for most everything. 
Did you have any further comment? Um, I don't believe so. Um, can I just point something out? Yeah, please. So, um, so if you, you will see that there is corrective action yeah. under TAR, which is mm -hmm. attendance account receivable. So again, that's why we're really focusing on that. Not only is it, um, it's the fair and consistent thing to do is to collect rent from all residents, but it's to collect it in the timely manner and in the, in, in, in the percentage, the 30% that we're supposed to collect it. Um, and then when we don't follow the, the guidelines or the tenants not following the guidelines, we get an audit finding. Yeah. So that's why this audit finding is here. So that's why we're, we're, we really are forced to go into housing court when somebody's not working with us. Um, if we were, if we had a lot of tenant account re um, receivables and people were in repayment agreements, repayment agreements would, would stop a corrective uh, uh, action. That's another reason why we try to get into repayment agreements. One, a, again, it helps residents by paying off overdue balances without, without late fees, but it also protects the housing authority from getting an audit finding. Yeah. So that's, that's the reason for that audit finding. Uh, just for the commissioners and the public that's interested, is it's very important for the commissioners to uh, comply with their fiduciary responsibility legally and financially and empower the executive director and staff in making sure we don't have these audit findings. And that means, I mean, I'm going to say aggressively pursue repayment agreements, aggressively pursue people, even if you have to take them to housing court because they've refused a repayment agreement. We have to get this money. Mm -hmm. We have to get this money. Sue, do you have any further comments? No further comments. Nothing. I have one other comment, and that is regarding okay. to... I found this on the web. Oh. Do you have any further comments? How did that happen? Just charge itself on. <laughs> uh, we did get operational guidance for board member training, and that means we need to do some things differently because we had two board members who had failed to complete the training. Um, I've taken all my training and I'm now certified with additional training. Mm -hmm. um, so what is the plan for making sure that the two board members who haven't taken the training or being on the board, making sure that either this doesn't happen again if they're already off the board or? Right, is, is to get the, uh, so they've changed systems and, and upgraded the system at UMass to make it easier to get it. UMass runs the trainings online. Um, and that this is board training through um, the Department of the Executive Office of Housing. So this is different than the board training at Mass Naro. Um, so it, it, the commissioners by regulation are required to take it. Um, and when you have more than, uh, when you have a five member board, if you have two people that fail, it's a finding. Um, so it's just reminders and requests that they, fin they finish their training. If they need help, they can contact the office. And this is separate from what is required for open meeting law training and ethics commission training. Correct. Ethics commission and open meeting law training, the file on that, the certificate of completion is kept at the town hall, correct? Uh, we actually get a copy of that. You get a copy of that, okay. So, but is this uh, performance management review only considering the HLC training? Okay. Yeah. So someone or two people have not taken the board member training. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So before we leave, commissioners, can I ask a, a few questions? Because you're new. You're the new chair. When we submit the uh, agenda to you. Uh, will you send us a copy before it gets sent to me? We're, we're not on that. Well, we're, no, it's not on here, but because... But we're not on that top agenda topic. So uh, we're still on the board member. I just want to make sure you do it before you go on to another thing other than a dealing with commissioner we're not, business. We're not on that. We're on commissioner's discussion. Oh, I'm sorry. We're on board correspondence with the Hadley Housing Authority Performance Management Review. Right. It's item number six. Yes, but you you went to number six before. No, we're, we're on number six. 
A, we're still talking about right. the performance well, management then, review. And when are we allowed to talk about things to Not do? Not until it's on the agenda. Or, or, or we're working our way down the right but what i'm saying okay. when do we bring up things that having to do with things that were supposed to happen today but didn't happen today because it didn't get there on the was, agenda there was nothing that was supposed to be on the agenda that is not on the agenda the chair sets the agenda yes but he admitted that that we sent that agenda to him and it didn't get put on the agenda the chair sets the agenda okay so we're on the performance yeah. management review again <coughs> And are there any further comments? Yeah. Yeah. May I? Yeah. Comment? So the other um, correct or operational guidance was certificate cert certifications of reporting submissions, and I do just want to report that the reason for those was the lack of the board yes. approving the the board did not uh, the previous board did not approve the financial the quarterly financials as they were they are obligated to do, and then they were submitted late so that is a uh, and they were warned that it was going to be an audit finding yeah. and it is an audit finding um, the other part with the tenants account receivable and I'll be as diplomatic as I can is that there were previous issues of uh, board members interfering yes with uh, tenant ledgers trying attempting to interfere with tenant yes. ledgers and that set I believe that sets a message yes. to the to the tenants that payment of rent is not serious so what, but that is our, our business. Our so, business is right. And it is our most important business is to keep the doors open, the staff paid, etc. So the lights on. <laughs> we got to keep the lights on, right. We have to submit reports. We have to approve financials, quarterly statements, etc. Um, and I personally and professionally was aghast at what happened before. And I do not want to see it again. If a board, if a commissioner has a question, they need to ask their questions and be answered in full so that they can vote appropriately. Otherwise, they're abdicating their uh, duty of loyalty and duty of care. That's fiduciary duty as a commissioner. And if a commissioner continues to abdicate their responsibility, they must be removed from the board. So, is that does that sound reasonable? Yes. I think you just want to do the, these letters. Yes. And so, the next item on commissioner's discussion, I'm sorry, board correspondence, is this beautiful letter from Secretary Augustus of the. Uh, Executive Office of, of Housing and Livable Communities. Would you like to read it to us? Sure. So it, if I, I'll just summarize it. So that this is um, these are awards for additional funding um, for our vacant units. So uh, for vacant and there's different pools of money. So when we have our annual plan meeting, you'll see that we're going to get C, CIP money. So that's the money that they give us every Pardon year. Um, no, I don't. Oh, Pam, can you grab another envelope? I don't have. I didn't have one in mine, that particular. I'll, I'll get it for you. Yeah, it's in an envelope. Um, so this is additional money. They have vacant unit funding that they're awarding the Hadley Housing Authority, $113,913. Uh, $99,913 for two units at Golden Court for um, cabinets and floor refreshing paint and roll-in showers. These are units that we need for ADA um, folks, folks that need those amenities. And then um, some new cabinets and flooring and uh, two, two other apartments of $14,000. And then under um, vacant unit funds for Burke Way, which is our family developments down there, we're getting $34,680.71 for one unit and then for the other unit, uh, hold on to your hats, $209,995 to refurbish these units for new tenants. So that's a lot of additional subsidy coming into the housing authority. Uh, I would like to make a comment about this. If we didn't have you, Pamela, as our executive director, we would never get this funding. We did have to apply for that money. 
And you have to know about it and apply for it. Yep. Uh, Sue, did you have a comment? No, no I didn't. Oh, okay. Here, I'll take this one. Okay. Can you pass this down to us? Yeah. Here go, here's the letter. Thank you. Okay, any further comments from the two other commissioners on Secretary Augustus's letter? No sure. comment on the letter. Bye. So now we are to public comments. As I said when I opened the meeting, that you need to, this is another thing the attorney said at, um, at the conference emphatically, we need to ask the public to limit their comments to items on the agenda. Um, stuff like things that need to go to work reports or whatever, or uh, uh, we, we, no, we don't deal with that. So just the items that were on the agenda today, and this is to remain in compliance of open meeting law. So I will ask you to please do not speak until recognized by the chair. And you're actually addressing the chair, no one else. Um, be respectful of others. Uh, and comments will be taken under advisement. What I'll be saying to you is, and no board member will respond to your comment, I will just say thank you for your comment. However, if you're saying something that, I'll probably be making notes to, uh, Sue, would you come yes. sit back down? Well, I'm going to talk as a board. I you, mean, as you, a tenant. you cannot talk as as a tenant at this meeting. That was another thing. I don't think. No, you that, I went to the same thing you, meeting you did, and they, they that was just a suggestion. Well, it you wasn't did. You did. You did come on Wednesday. <laughs> so, um, so you are a commissioner, and you don't speak as a tenant. So that's. that's I disagree with that. It doesn't matter. We'll ask. It does you matter to me. We'll <laughs> ask the attorney. So. Um, I, Yes. Who had their hand up? Tracy, you had your hand up? Yes, I Tracy. do. Um, since these people who are, are thinking that they don't have to pay for the roof over their head, what are the legal costs of taking them to housing court? Are the tenants paying us back for that, or is that coming out of our pocket? No comment. We cannot respond. Okay. Thank you for your comment. Lisa! Okay. Um, is it possible, and this I don't know, this is an agenda item. There's a lot of acronyms, CPA and ABC and QRS. Um, it, and I don't know, maybe everybody knows it here but me, but I'm wondering if at least once those um, acronyms can be um, explained. And that's just for the meeting. And the other thing is, I would like, I'm interested in a seat on the board. So, Thank you for your comment. So I don't know what yeah. goes forward from here. I'll look to be advised by. Thank you for your comment. Anyone else make a comment? Anyone else? Okay. Then moving right along. Um, our next meeting date, I have two dates available, but I haven't asked Campbell if they work for her. April 30th, so we can catch up because we are we didn't have a meeting in March. So April 30th, Tuesday, April 30th and 11th, does that work for you? I'm looking at my... <laughs> You're looking at your secretary? No, no. She does. She administrates. I do system. believe we should be able to have a meeting as long as it's not a long one. Well, again, <laughs> we're, we're slightly over... An hour. So April 30th. Sure. April 30th. Everyone else? Okay, and I would like to set the following okay. I month. Somewhere. I forgot the time. What's your next date? April 30th. No, what, you said you had two dates? Yes, and then uh, I want to go ahead and schedule for the following month because we're getting tight here with you leaving. This is town meeting. I would like to have our last board meeting with you on May 21st. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's that fine. Yeah. So, so our CP four town meeting. Town meeting is on the twenty first. Right, but if that's the vote. That, well, I shouldn't say town meeting. Voting is on the twenty first. Right. So he's still legal. He's still legal. Still legal. Okay. Yeah. Which is why. Okay. Why. <laughs> okay. So our next two meetings will be April thirtieth 
uh, at 11, that is the last Tuesday in April, and May 21st at 11. Did well, you have a could you, could you have legal send me a letter stating the fact that you can't speak as a tenant when you're a board member? Because that we're changing that now without giving us any notice. And tenants need to know if they attend these meetings that it has to be on the agenda what they're going to speak about, otherwise they can't. Oh, so they have to, to, to oh, tenants have, have to be aware of this. So oh. if they're going to bring up something at a meeting, it's got to be on the agenda under tenants. Right. Speech. So we'll be we'll we'll change the agenda to make sure that yeah. it's there. But you're you're talking about two different things. Yeah, two different right. things. Right. So the other thing is I went to the attorney mm -hmm. workshops too, and they I never heard that a well, you, I believe, a board member can't speak as a tenant. When they respectfully, them. you heard right. it wrong because Attorney Driscoll came and talked to me afterwards. So I'm fully aware of what was said in all sessions. Um, second of all, that's actually covered in the DHCD training that you still need to take. Yeah. So you have to take that training, and that point blank tells you that. Yeah. So it, it's it is it's a but very difficult. If that's true, then why have we been allowing it to this point, and oh. why not have a a day that we t we know I'm we're walking? I'll tell you why. That's part I'm of the discussion. It doesn't matter. That's why right. I'm the chair. And I'll explain to you right. because I was not the chair. And going forward, we're going to do things by the rules, the regulations, and the law. But I'd like to see the rules and regulations then other than coming from your You should go look at them, or you can ask <laughs> right. me, and I'll be happy to sit with you and walk you through it's, it's, it. It's covered under state ethics. It's covered in the HLC training that you need to take. Um, it's covered in open meeting law. It's You can't you can't have a personal interest in it. And then, and especially now where there's only three of us, if you remove yourself from the table, table we lost you as a commissioner so we lost our quorum and then we the meeting ends so there is there's a lot of um there there's a a lot of things that you can't overlap when you're a tenant and you're a board member and it can be very frustrating but but the job of the authority of the commissioners is a fiduciary and policy making authority it's not all these other things that have been coming on the agenda it, it's just not and that's why this board was very dysfunctional. Right. So why do we allow to allow it to happen up to this point today? Uh, be, because it, it I was, was not the chair. Because it was dysfunctional. It was dysfunctional. And now, if you have further questions, I'll be happy to sit with you after this meeting and answer them, Commissioner Alvin Heinlein. So uh, items for future agenda. Now is your opportunity, uh, Sue, to say what you would like on the future agenda, and I will take your comments under advisement. Yes. I'm not going to list the agenda now. I will give you the, I wrote them down. Oh, all right. But what I'm saying is the fact that I hope with you as being the, the new um, chairperson that when we submit an agenda that it gets put on the agenda, and if not, let us know why, and to give us a copy uh, before it goes to be typed up and hung on town hall. So we can look at it to make sure what we tell you is, is correct. I think that's fair. And so if you will early, like you have it already written down what you want on the next agenda, if you will give me that, then I will consider the items and let you know why, if there are items that can't be on the agenda, I will let you know why. Is that fair? Yes, but I still would like to know about um, if you could point out to me when, when this is over exactly why a tenant can't. I mean, yes, I told you. Can't, if you will stay I'd like to see it in writing, though. Conflict of interest, right? Uh, I'll conflict, be happy to sit with the you. conflict of interest training. It's, yeah, it's a conflict of interest. Well, we both can sit with you and explain it to you. But I, I think the problem, as Pamela said, was you have not yet taken the board training. I did have take. I took the trainings from UMass on the computer. Did not. You I did. I even got. I, I did take the. You'll have to show me the certificate then, because right. they marked I you. Will. Yeah, because they marked you off, so we could correct that. I even got a letter of completion that I. Okay. If you, you could send that, that to, out. To, sure. Yeah. yeah. There, there was a problem with the UMass system, so if you, we can prove that, maybe we can get that removed. Right. Yeah. So that's why, and they've extended it now until May because of that. But if you have that letter, if you can provide that sure. to the housing authority, then I will correct that. What happens if Sue doesn't take the training by May? Well, she's saying she did take it. She I know, but what it. happens if she didn't? Then we, but I did. So I'm it. So but, I'm what happens if a commissioner has not taken the training? You get an audit. Okay. 
And we, you will, Pam, you will let tenants know that if they come to a meeting, they have to let the chair know ahead of time to what to put on the agenda. So tenants don't put things on the agenda. Well, then how? You just said it has to be a, an agenda item in order for a tenant to speak about it. That's right. Here's the agenda, and they can only speak about what we've already spoken but about. But how will they know when they, can we give an agenda to everybody door to door? So no. Will know. No. They're posted, ma'am. And they've always been put. We follow open meeting law. They're on the, the teleprompter. They're Posted well, 48 hours and the very few people come up here. Like they can look at it online on, well, at the town website. On the town well, website. Well, we talked about going back to an electronic payment, uh, you know, signing a check. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Let's put yeah. that on the agenda yeah. for yes. April. And make it easier for charity. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's really good. Thank you yeah. for remembering that. Mm -hmm. All right. So, do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. We adjourn. Sue? Yes, adjourn. Okay, vote. Aye. Three zero.